Today's holy shift, one small thing that you can do with love is, especially for all you fixers and sensitive empaths out there, whether you are grieving the loss of a loved one or are desperately wanting to comfort someone you love who has lost a beloved pet or person, or perhaps you're just looking for ways to help yourself to carry your grief alongside your joy, this is the one that I want to share be a lifeboat. If someone you loved is grieving and your natural operating system kicks you into fixing mode, listen up. I love that you care. And grief isn't something that needs to be fixed. It's not a problem to be solved. It's a natural process that many species like us go through when there is loss in our lives. And because we have a prefrontal cortex, we are taught to problem solve and we are rewarded for fixing and finding solutions. We aren't taught how to be uncomfortable with the feelings and the emotions that are natural in a death phobic culture. We grieve for a love we have never known, a welcome that we've never received, and an ever constant ache we often feel that we can't name. So if you're a fixer, the best gift that you can give yourself is presence, to be brave and focus on what's important, to speak the name of the one that they have lost if you don't know how to help. Be awkward and clumsy and don't disappear on them. There's a whole chapter in my book, Until We Meet Again, how to carry your grief alongside your joy after pet loss for people in your life who care about you and perhaps don't understand your grief, um, who I call your lifeboats, your support team. So if you're listening to this little holy shift or you read my blog or my weekly love notes, thank you for loving your pets, for wanting to make the world a better place and for metabolizing your grief in a way that uplifts the whole. I know that there is only so much relentless sorrow anyone can listen to or read, and I want to apologize if my grief has hurt anybody. If you resonate with being a problem solver and you feel frustrated that no matter what you say or do for someone you care for who is grieving, you can't fix things for them. So please don't go away. Stay. There's nothing to do, nothing to prove. There is no fixing grief. You, you help just by listening and talking. Don't underestimate the therapeutic value of just being a good listener. Taking care of someone who's grieving can be exhausting. You don't know what to do or say, and you can't take away their pain. And you will wonder if maybe they need professional help. You'll worry when you find them sitting in the dark, on the grass, staring up at the sky, at night or hysterically crying in the rain or the pet food aisle of the grocery store. You will be reminded of your own experiences with grief and loss, past and pending, and of your own mor mortality. I realize that it's also hard for some people who have suffered a recent or not so recent loss to listen to this kind of stuff. It can be an upsetting reminder of a grief that still may be unresolved. And unresolved grief can be described as undelivered emotional communications of love with no place to go that needs to be metabolized and moved and redirected, not denied. A friend told me that she'd started reading my book but had to stop regularly to give herself breaks to feel and digest what was naturally coming up when an affirmation of a story and it reminded her too much of her own experience of losing a loved one last year. Ida Proloff says that grief is a solitary thing that cannot be experienced alone. So I want to thank you for being a lifeboat, for feeling your own pain and your, your love so that together we can heal. And if you have read Until We Meet Again and need to take breaks between chapters, please do so. Be gentle on yourself and your body and acknowledge how brave you are when you keep reading on knowing that those painful feelings are a pathway to your purpose and to your healing. My intention in writing this book was to be useful, to give an honest voice to the process because I feel expression is the key to assimilation and indeed our own survival. And if you'd like to print off the no apology 
cards that I, I have made for those awkward moments when you aren't up to social gatherings or you have no energy to explain to the cashier in the store why you're crying, you may find those little cards quite useful. Hand them out liberally, pin one on your jacket and give yourself full permission to add a little dark humor if you need to. I'll post the link below. And until we meet again, I wish you good grief, good movement, and to allow yourself to stay in the dark, to be a lifeboat for others, and to know that by you being vulnerable enough to share your sorrow, you give permission for others to share theirs.